black scientists? Um, how many black scientists do I know? Uh, zero. Yeah, zero. I don't know what else to talk about. A lot of things that we do, there are so many things that we haven't used that are invented by black people that no one really talks about. Making life a little bit easier, a little less tedious. If you play with a Titleist ball, you are playing with the coating developed by Ronald Ambrose. I have over 80 US patents. I probably have as many, if not more, world patents. I was born on an island. It's a very small island called Union Island. It's about two miles by three miles. We were poor, but we did not know we were poor. In other words, in terms of uh, other standards. And I'll explain to you what I, I meant by that. Like every day we did not have food, but in some respect, we had a lot of fruit trees, for example, and we had a lot of other things that uh, growing up you can um, you have access to, to these things and so we were never really hungry even though we, we didn't have uh, much in terms of money right we uh, grew up and went to the usual primary school but we didn't have a secondary school so to get a secondary education i had to go to the island of saint vincent the larger island that's part of the the whole uh, country saint vincent and the grenadines you had to get a place to live and generally there were people there were families that were taking borders wow. there because you had, this, you had to pay these people every month. It was very expensive, relatively speaking. Right. But fortunately, I had a sister in St. Vincent who taught, her name was uh, Leotha, and she taught there. And what happened, she supported me. In other words, mm -hmm. the money that she made was enough to pay her board and my board. But it was a struggle. My mother's name is Henrietta Ambrose. She lived a long life. I think she died in, in 1992. But my father, his name was uh, John Ambrose. And he died uh, relatively young. He died in 1951. Because I was away from Union Island, there was nobody telling me to study. I developed a strong sense of responsibility in terms of taking care of myself and studying and making sure that I get good grades. Mm -hmm. Education was looked upon very, very seriously. And in St. Vincent, I received my high school diploma. After that, I was uh, probably about 18. And after that, I wanted to continue on to university. So I immigrated to Canada to the undergraduate level. I started out at Concordia University and then finished at the University of Waterloo. So I decided to go back to school and I applied to the Polytechnic Institute of New York, which was in Brooklyn. And they accepted me to do graduate work in chemistry. I started there in 1975 and I completed my course there in 1980. I chose chemistry because I looked at what the other options were. I could do mathematics or I can do psychology or I can do history. I, I had the aptitude to do a lot of different things. The options favored chemistry. I became aware that uh, companies were coming on campus 
I noticed that from time to time, some of my colleagues would be dressed in suits and I would say, what's happening? Why are you in a suit? And they're saying, well, this company is coming on campus. I said, what company is coming on campus today? And they said, PPG Industries. I said, okay, maybe I'll just try to see them. And that's what happened. They said, okay, uh, we'll see you. And they started asking questions and I had to go on the board and draw structures and tell them some of the, about some of the things that I was doing. And when they went away, they invited me up to, to Pittsburgh. Interviewing at this level is very tedious. It's like an all day interview. You have to go in, you give a seminar, and then you meet with maybe about six or eight different different chemists for interviews. And that was successful and they offered me a job. So I started with them in 1980 as a senior research chemist. And I developed polymers. So the technician does all the work and I do all the thinking. The first industrial coating that I developed that went commercial was a coating on golf balls. When I would discuss how I made the polymer, a colleague of mine said, you know, I've been here for years. I would never have thought that if you did it that way, it would give the result that you got. So I remember that because the, the, my colleague said, I never would have thought of that. That's, <laughs> that was a patented product. It had to be hard and flexible and it had to not chip off the, the ball as you hit it. You, you want me to give you some explanations? A coating comprises basically of a polymer and then a material that would react with that polymer to cross-link it and form a, a sheet over the car. And um, additionally, if it's a clear coat, then that's probably basically all, all you need. But if it's a pigmented coating, then you add your pigments to complete that coating. To when you're ready to coat the car or the golf ball, you mix component one with component two. It has a part life of about two, three hours. Wow. And then you spray apply it and then it forms a film on the car or on the golf ball. And that's, that's how coatings work. So th that's basically what you have. You just got a lesson. <laughs> you just <laughs> got a lesson in how you form a coating. My career in PPG advanced from stage to stage positions, and I ended up at PPG as the manager of uh, industrial and packaging coatings. And packaging co coatings will include like can coatings. Things I developed at PPG was a powder coating for steel buildings. Now for that uh, invention, it was submitted and recognized as one of the 100 most innovative inventions mm. in America. I have a plaque for that. That I consider one of my best achievements. So, so my job was very rewarding. Uh, Hexahydrotallic and hydride and neopentyl glycol, isocyanate, a polyisocyanate, a polyurethane. The sun degrades things. The UV light of the sun degrades coatings. Built-in dilorate, that's a catalyst. I'm trying to teach you chemistry. I hope it makes sense.
it's important to learn about Dr. Ambrose as a people, especially for black people, because he's a repres he he he's an example of what's possible when we're encouraged to do things outside of our norm. Like he, he's he's an example of what it is to want to be something other than a LeBron, something other than a Jay-Z, something other than a Kyrie, something other than a Lil Wayne. So he's a very important person for like people in general to learn about because he's made a lot of strides in the world of science that people don't even know about.